Our first speaker is Megan Harkema. I am a graduate student at Vanderbilt University. Uh, I'm in my third year and I work in Dr. Steve Kron's group in the Nuclear Environmental Engineering program there. I am going to be discussing with you our progress and our path forward on our molten salt sampling system development project. First, I would like to introduce you to the concept of a molten salt sampling system, as well as its historical predecessor within the molten salt reactor experiment. A molten salt sampling system within an MSR can provide the capability to monitor and control the reactor specific physical and chemical salt characteristics that can have safety and operability impacts on the reactor, such as corrosion progression, fissile material consumption and isotopic distributions, fuel salt redox conditions, as well as in leakage of contaminants such as air or coolant salt. This functionality was actually recognized by the designers of the molten salt reactor experiment who developed the sampler enricher system within the MSRE to access and remove the, that fuel salt for chemical analysis. However, the MSRE sampler enricher exhibited a number of design deficiencies that resulted in less than ideal performance and make the design as it stands unsuitable for use within future MSRs going forward. For this reason, Vanderbilt is partnered with the University of Michigan and Idaho National Laboratory to develop a more reliable and modern equivalent to the MSRE sampler enricher that can be used as a model for future MSRs. It is also the objective of this project to test the proposed design at the fluoride salt test facility or FLUSFA, a FLINAC based molten salt loop that's housed in Dr. Zhao Dong Sun's laboratory at the University of Michigan. I would next like to just talk briefly about the MSRE sampler enricher and its performance. Uh, the sampler enricher was essentially a winch and capsule based sampling system that was complete with purge and off gas connections. Um, the system was capable of removing salt samples from the MSRE's fuel salt pump bowl, as well as adding enriching salt or chemistry control materials to the MSRE fuel salt loop also through the pump bowl. The MSRE pump bowl was the high point in the MSRE's fuel salt loop, and thus the sampler enricher was also used in attempts to take gas samples from this expansion volume. However, the representativity of these samples was not confirmed at the time of the analysis of the samples. As I mentioned earlier, the MSRE sampler and Richard did suffer from a number of operational occurrences over its short five-year life within the MSRE. Some of the more common issues associated with the system's performance include the loss of control of the capsules that were designed to collect salt samples within the system itself. Twice, this actually resulted in the permanent loss of the sampling capsules within the pump bowl. The rupture of the rubber boots on the manipulators that were used to maneuver the capsules in some of the high radiation areas also was a constant problem with the system. And furthermore, the um, isolation valves seen in the figure here titled operational and maintenance valves uh, exhibited poor sealing performance that was tied in part to um, becoming salt encrusted as capsules with salt on the outside of them passed through the valve spaces. During our work to date, we have come across some perceptions that the first MSRs will be capable of utilizing total online monitoring to predict and measure all of the salt characteristics of interest within the first reactors. However, given the optimistic timelines that are perceived for these reactors to be developed, it is likely that first generation MSRs or demonstration reactors will require some form of salt sampling for model validation for these online monitoring technologies, as well as supportive fuel qualification studies. Uh, this functionality was also mentioned in ORNL's 2018 letter report on the subject of fuel qualification within MSRs. And furthermore, this sampling and a sort of molten salt sampling system could also be used as a means of controlling the salt composition and reactivity by adding fissile or fertile material to maintain or increase reactivity or chemistry control additives such as beryllium metal or uh, salt uh, into the reactor as well. As I mentioned before, our ultimate objective of this project is to develop and construct and demonstrate a reliable and safe molten salt sampling system prototype at the University of Michigan's FLUSFA, as well as to document the design so that it can be used as a model for future MSRs and MSR designers. In order to streamline our design process, we are using systems engineering practices, uh, including gathering stakeholder input, documenting functional requirements, identifying interfacing systems as well. Um, to develop our design. We are also spending a great deal of time looking at prior radioactive liquid sampling experience 
in some of the previous reactors. Obviously, we're looking at the MSRE sampler enricher, but we are also investigating light water reactor coolant sampling, as well as the primary sodium coolant sampling that takes place in sodium fast reactors. Uh, this is being done so that we can incorporate lessons learned and best practices from these previous efforts into the conceptual design of our modern system. As our design matures, we are planning a hazard evaluation of it to uh, identify and remedy any design or operational problems prior to prototype construction. This is in line with some of Vanderbilt and EPRI's previous work on developing safety and design methodologies for advanced reactors. Uh, after the design changes that might be suggested by our hazard evaluation have been incorporated into our conceptual design, we then intend to go forward and construct an initial physical prototype of the design and test it in a water-based environment if time permits. However, uh, we are in the middle of COVID-19 delays, so this is up in the air at the moment. If uh, design changes are identified during this water-based testing, we will incorporate them into our sampling system design before we go ahead and test it at the FLUSFA facility. Uh, understanding that there are always unknowns when developing and testing new systems, especially within molten salt environments, we have also built in time at the end of the design project to make changes and retest in the molten salt if necessary. As we are all fairly familiar with at this point, experience with molten salt reactors is limited in comparison to light water reactors. This can complicate the traditionally deterministic design and licensing processes that are applied to nuclear systems. Uh, I'm sure we'll hear more about that in the licensing section later today. These deterministic approaches do rely on experience-based codes and standards that may not be frequently applicable to MSRs or advanced reactor designs in general. However, this doesn't mean that we should discount the insights that we can gain from reviewing the historical molten salt reactor experience during the design of our modern equivalent systems. Uh, in regard to our molten salt sampling system development project, we are, have actually developed and demonstrated a systematic and traceable method for reviewing the MSRE sampler and richer's operating experience in order to incorporate lessons learned from that into the design of our modern equivalent system. One of the crucial aspects of this methodology is our use of the system's theoretic accident model and process also known as STAMP. This is a systems engineering based accident model that was developed by Dr. Nancy Levison from MIT. Uh, STAMP perceives accidents as a loss of system control, which allows for accounting for more diverse accident uh, contributors than when using traditional accident analysis methodologies. Overall, our STAMP based analysis of the MSRE sampler and richer operational occurrences that are uh, detailed within the publicly available MSR program semi annual reports revealed to us design insights uh, that directly do inform the design of our molten salt sampling system. Shown here in this table are just a few of the 36 design insights that we have identified to date. It is important to note that these insights can be tied to the functional requirements for our future system. And then some of the examples of the insights that we have gained so far include the identification of a, a more reliable capsule position indication mechanism within the system itself, the potential for incorporating a cleaning or decontamination function into a modern molten salt sampling system design, as well as some of the shortfalls associated with manipulators and manipulator boots that to our understanding still exist today, and further the impacts of the highly wetting salt on the performance of traditional valves. It is our hope that going forward, our molten salt sampling system design meets the expectations of those who intend to use it in, in, and incorporate it into their molten salt reactor concepts. Thus, we do want to ask you, the MSR experts and designers and analytical chemistry experts here for your input on aspects of our molten salt sampling system design to be sure that you are receiving a product that suits your needs. Some of the specific areas of our molten salt sampling system design that we hope to gain your feedback on, which I will discuss a little bit more in the coming slides, include some of the high level functions that we've identified that a molten salt sampling system should perform, as well as the systems we have identified that will be required to interface with the molten salt sampling system. And finally, our first draft at a design concept for the interface between the salt itself and the molten salt sampling system. After the workshop, we do intend to follow up with those of you virtually present to provide a better description of the systems engineering work that we have performed to date and then get your thoughts on our design and the functionality of our design via a short questionnaire. 
Shown on this slide is an initial hierarchy of the high level functions that we have determined uh, may or, or should probably be performed by a modern molten salt sampling system. We lift, listed these in an order of preferential uh, inclusion. These are based on the MSRE sampler enrichers functions, as well as our understanding of modern MSR safety, operability, and salt sustainability expectations. Some of the functions that we have identified are similar to those major uh, functions performed by the MSRE sampler enricher, obviously the most important being salt sampling itself. Um, but the others that we have considered include adding enriching material back into the salt stream. Furthermore, we have considered some of the secondary functions as well uh, that supported various MSRE testing programs. These included removing the cover gas samples that I talked about earlier, as well as inserting uh, beryllium metal or materials coupons into the salt. We also considered a final function, uh, removing bulk quantities of fuel salt to maintain acceptable fission product concentrations. Uh, we looked at this in light of some of our other efforts aimed at understanding fuel salt sustainability. However, due to the throughput requirements of such a system, it's likely not going to be an important function for a molten salt sampling system specifically. Our research to date has pointed that the two most important functions uh, for most MSR concepts will likely be the sampling itself as well as redox potential control. However, we do recognize that the exact functionality of a molten salt sampling system is impacted by reactor specific considerations such as salt composition or reprocessing scheme and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide about the importance of the molten salt sampling system functions we have identified as they relate to your reactor designs or understanding of molten salt reactor concepts in general. Another of the systems engineering tasks that we have performed to date is the identification of interfacing systems for a molten salt sampling system within an MSR. Interfacing systems identification is an important systems engineering task. It's intended to facilitate the treatment of physical or functional interactions of a system with its surrounding. This is extremely important in terms of a molten salt sampling system because interfaces with a system that contains high levels of radioactivity can represent a design weak point and be crucial to overall system safety in the long run. In order to identify the interfacing systems for our modern design, we did use our understanding of the MSRE's sampler enricher to first identify its interfacing systems and then translated these into their modern equivalents if they exist still to this day. And our analysis did indicate that many of the MSRE subsystems that impacted the sampler enricher are still going to be important from the consideration of a modern molten salt sampling system. Furthermore, we have tried to format the definitions of these modern systems in a way that maintains a flexible system design that's intended to be adaptable with minimal modifications to various MSR concepts. Here on this slide is our first draft conceptual design that we are hoping to get your feedback on here, specifically the interface between the molten salt sampling system and the fuel or coolant salt that is being sampled. Once again, this design is gonna be tested at the University of Michigan Flusbo loop, a eutectic flinac loop operating between 550 and 700 degrees Celsius. Uh, from our evaluation of many sampling systems, it is our belief that a grab sampling system in which a sample collection device is inserted directly into the salt, opposed to methods that rely on pulling off a small salt stream, is best suited to MSR salt sampling since these other sampling methods have historically posed representativity problems and in a liquid fueled molten salt reactor may have safeguards and security implications. Shown here is our schematic of what we're calling a freeze port concept that we believe will provide a reliable means of accessing the salt below in the flowing flinac lines of the flustal loop or in the primary salt of a solid fuel molten salt reactor or the fuel salt in a liquid fuel molten salt reactor. This concept is intended to draw from the freeze valve concept that was used within the MSRE in which a frozen salt plug was used in place of a mechanical valve in the drain lines. However, instead of being used as a means of draining the salt from the reactor core to achieve safe shutdown through melting the plug, the frozen salt here can be melted using external heaters to allow a salt collection device to pass through it and access, in the case of the flush fill loop, the circulating salt below. Our motivation for this concept can be traced back to some of the problems that the MSRE sampler enricher suffered 
namely that the system's mechanical isolation valves, although not in direct contact with the salt itself, did over time become encrusted with salt that reduced the valve sealing capabilities and resulted in excess radioactive contamination within the sampler enricher and around the um, external parts of the design as well. We've also fitted the design with the appropriate nitrogen purge and relief connections that are supposed to be compatible with the flush flow as well. We first intend to demonstrate this freeze port concept's ability to reliably open and close prior to demonstrating the sample retrieval aspects of the design, which are still uh, in development at the moment. However, there's two aspects to the sample retrieval portion, both sample collection and sample transport. These will be done by uh, inserting the sample collection device through the top of this cap here. Although still in development, some of the concepts that we have considered for sample collection and transport mechanisms include a syringe-like sample collection device. This is inspired by our review of another homogeneous fueled reactor, the Homogeneous Reactor Experiment 2 sampling system. And some of the transport mechanisms that we have included for sort of capsule movement within the gas spaces of this system include uh, pneumatics, such as the rabbit systems used in HIFER, or a sort of mechanical train track-like concept as well. Uh, we've also developed a sort of notional procedures for operating this freeze port design. These procedures assume that the freeze port is installed in the flusco loop with nitrogen in the headspace, and that salt is maintained frozen uh, below, and that the salt in the main lines of the flusco loop is heated and flowing. To open the port, the headspace gas is first purged by opening the bleed valve. Nitrogen is then initiated to prevent salt contamination and equalize the pressure between the headspace and the flowing salt below. We can then shut off the external cooling airflow and the port heaters can be energized to melt the salt. The nitrogen pressure, port temperature, and salt level are all monitored during this process as well. Once the port has been sufficiently heated to melt the salt plug, we can then sample the salt below. When uh, sampling is complete, you can shut the port heaters off, uh, reinitiate the external cooling airflow, and shut the nitrogen flow off to close it. Uh, the bleed valve is also open to initiate a purge of the gas uh, when the port temperature measurements would indicate that the salt plug is frozen, and then the bleed valve would be shut. And finally, just uh, for our next year of progress, we intend to perform the hazard evaluation that we discussed or that I discussed earlier um, and incorporate the feedback of the uh, stakeholders that we are uh, eliciting here for feedback. And um, the performance of the hazard evaluation is intended to allow us to identify safety or operability problems that the design may exhibit and then incorporate those changes into our design while it is still inexpensive and quick to do so. And then we intend to fabricate and prototype. And then here's a thank you to our partners, Dr. Zhao Dong Sun at the University of Michigan, Dr. Piyush Sabarwal from Idaho National Laboratory, uh, NIA for our funders, and Oak Ridge National Laboratory who has been generous with time and access to MSRE data. All right, thank you, Megan.